So eight sessions of meditation today plus four yesterday. You've completed 12 sessions of meditation. Very good. Some of you at this stage might feel like you're walking up a steep hill or you might feel like you're walking through quicksand. That's normal. You remember those images of those old cars that you had to kind of crank the engine. You had to kind of keep cranking until the engine starts purring. Can be a bit like that. And even professional athletes, if they win a marathon, then they have a rest period. And when it comes time to training again for the marathon, there are sore muscles, even among professionals. So when we're exercising mental muscles, in a way, that have been a little bit lazy, it's normal to feel a bit of fatigue. And so you have to nourish your effort with confidence that it's a good thing to do and that these efforts bring good results. And also the meta practice, we'll do a little bit more of that this afternoon, is very nourishing, that you pacify and calm your heart. Somebody asked the question, is it supposed to be stressful and frustrating when the mind gets lost of thoughts, fantasies, feelings about the past and future about a hundred times already since yesterday? I also had countless dreams. So I'm not sure it's supposed to be stressful, but it's normal that in the beginning, first few days, it is a bit stressful because uh, it's important to understand nothing's going wrong. What you're seeing is the normal state of your mind that you don't notice. So what happens when you come and you sit and you try to be still and you try to be in the present moment, you notice that the mind goes out to the future, back to the past, out to other people. Fantasy. So that's what it's actually doing all the time. Well, not all the time, but a lot of the time in your ordinary life. So when you come to meditate, then you see just how much the mind isn't in the body and isn't with the present, which is why we have to practice bringing it back. It's stressful if we judge it for being the way it is, and it's stressful if we really want it to be different to the way it is. That's what's stressful. But it can be a little tiring just this start again, start again, start again, it is tiring. Because like I said, it's like you're flexing new muscles or working with qualities that have got a little bit lazy. So just like going for a run or going for a swim, having got a little bit unfit, you feel tired and you feel sore. But what happens is if you keep up with it, the muscles get stronger, the fitness gets established, and it gets easier to cruise, as it were. So anyway, you're about 12 sessions in. It's day two and day three, in my experience, that uh, is the most challenging. After that, the mindfulness that you've been generating should be able to bring a bit more clarity around these things, and hopefully by then we're not taking it as personally. We just go, okay, more thoughts, okay, more memories, okay, more fantasies and just gently coming back, not reacting to, not adding aversion to the pain in our bodies, and not reacting to the thoughts with not wanting them, letting go of wanting peacefulness, and just coming back to the meditation object, understanding that the mind will be peaceful sometimes, it won't be peaceful other times, you just keep coming back to the meditation object, and training oneself to apply the energy but also relax. So letting go of the desires, I want to be peaceful, I want jhana, I want to be a sotapanna, I want to be the Buddha. Dropping that. All you need to do is, you need to want to be with that breath in the present moment. Letting go of the aversion, I can't stand her, I can't stand him, if the Arjun doesn't shut up, I want to go to sleep. I don't want to be the Buddha, I've changed my mind, I want to be Mara. <laughs> might be more fun, dropping the rebelliousness, dropping the aversion, the irritation, just allowing things to be as they are, working with conditions. If those guys don't stop cutting that metal, I'm going to go and bang them over the head, that kind of thing. Seeing that aversive thoughts, not believing them, 
And just being interested. So one of the best things that you can do is bring an attitude of curiosity, interest. Isn't it interesting the way one feeling gives rise to a reaction of happiness, another feeling gives a rise to a reaction of dejection, misery? And putting up a bit of a struggle and learning to be stronger. You don't have to react to pleasant feelings with happiness. You don't have to react to unpleasant feelings with misery. Learning about the peace involved in equanimity, just being able to rest in that part of the mind that knows, in equipoise, serenity. And you've got some nice serene images to look at when you open your eyes. This being holding the lotus looks very serene, looks very balanced. Very balanced on top of an elephant. This one as well, very balanced on top of a lion. Nice images, equipoise, balance. Understanding the nature of the mind and just getting to know it and not adding suffering. So when things are unpleasant, knowing they're unpleasant but not adding the not liking. When things are pleasant, knowing that they're pleasant but not adding the craving. It's subtle and that's why it's a bit tiring because we try too hard and then we don't try hard enough. We get willful and then we give up. And all of that is helpful because what you need, what we all need to learn is the gentle and consistent pacing which isn't trying too hard and which isn't giving up. It's just keeping on doing it, keeping on doing it. Moment after moment. The middle way. That's the middle way. Keeping the mind in the middle, not craving, not pushing away. We're just knowing, paying attention, being interested. And then when peace does arise, just resting, appreciating the capacity that you have to be peaceful. Keep going. And we'll do a bit of metta later as well. It's helpful. <laughs>